ever get that sinking feeling, you know, when you think you've canceled a subscription, but then the charges, they just keep hitting your account month after month. Oh, the worst. Like finding out you have to pay for those extra spicy jalapenos you thought were free at the taco truck. Except it's your bank account and not just a few bucks, right? Exactly. And that's what's happening to you with this Jim Fit LLC situation, mm -hmm. right? It's been yeah. going on since January. And January, wow. Yeah, you've tried disputing the charges with Chase, even got a new card number. But it's like they have some like superpower for clinging on. It's incredibly frustrating, and honestly, it's way more common than you'd think. We're talking about the kind of stuff that keeps consumer protection agencies up at night. You assume a new card number would be a surefire way to cut off those unwanted charges. Well, new number, new you, right? Right. It's like changing the locks. Problem solved. But you were smart. You went online and dug up some interesting advice from fellow frustrated subscribers on Reddit. There was that one commenter, I think they mentioned they were a lawyer, who said they were getting the runaround from Chase over similar phantom charges. Ooh, a lawyer in the mix. This is where things get really interesting, especially from a consumer rights perspective. You have every right to control your financial information, but there's this little known culprit often lurking behind these recurring charges. It's called the updater service, and it's like the phantom key maker in our scenario. Okay, updater service. Honestly, it sounds kind of harmless on the surface, maybe even helpful. Tell me more about this phantom key maker. Right, I mean, in theory, it is supposed to be helpful. It's all about convenience, right? Like, imagine you get a new credit card. Instead of going through the hassle of updating your payment information for every single place you shop online or every subscription, this service automatically shares those shiny new card details with the vendors. Oh, so it's like a well-meaning, but kind of clueless digital middleman just trying to make our lives easier. Exactly. But as we're seeing with your situation, there's a dark side to all this convenience. Especially when you're dealing with a company that seems, well, let's just say less than reputable. Less than reputable, yeah. yeah. So this updater service is almost like it's unwittingly handing Jim Fit LLC the keys to your new financial kingdom, even after you've tried to shut them out. Unfortunately, yeah. And the really sneaky part. This updater service is often enabled by default. A lot of people don't even realize it exists until BAM. Yeah. They're stuck trying to escape this never-ending cycle of unwanted charges. Kind of like that free trial that's anything but, am I right? Ugh, don't remind me. And that's where the Reddit thread really got fired up. So many people chiming in with, disable the updater service like it was some kind of magic bullet. Well, they're not wrong. It's a crucial first step. You need to call Chase and specifically request to disable the Visa account updater service for your account. And don't let that official sounding name fool you. It's not some essential security feature. It's an opt-in service that can absolutely be turned off. Okay, so that's step one. Got it. But what about these charges that are just piling up? I mean, January to now, there's a whole lot of unwanted gym memberships. The Reddit folks also seemed really passionate about something called a chargeback. Is that different from just disputing the charge with Chase? Like, is it a secret code word that makes customer service reps tremble? Haha, -ha, kind of. Think of it this way. A dispute is between you and your bank. You're saying, hey, I don't recognize this charge. Can you, like, maybe look into it? But a chargeback, that's bringing in the big guns. We're talking the card network itself. Visa, MasterCard, and that, my friend, gets expensive for the vendor. Like, way more than those jalapenos. Ooh. Okay, so it's less of a polite request and more of a this is serious people exactly a chargeback it carries much more weight because it can directly impact the vendor's ability to process payments in the future it's a pretty big deal okay now i'm really starting to see why those redditors were practically chanting chargeback chargeback yeah. it's not just about getting your money back right right it's about hitting that vendor where it really stings their ability to just keep charging people left and right you got it so in your case with this gym fit saga Instead of just disputing every month, what you really need to do is file that formal chargeback with Chase. Absolutely. For all those unauthorized gym fit charges, going all the way back to... So wait, it was January when this whole thing started, right? Yep, January. Hmm. And while you're on the phone with them, pro tip from, well, someone who's been in the personal finance trenches for a while, document everything. Like yeah. everything, everything. Okay, so like take notes while I'm on hold. Yeah, everything. exactly. Every phone call, every single email, write down the name of every representative you talk to. Oh, and those reference numbers? Yes. Jot those reference numbers down like they're winning lottery ticket numbers. Because trust me, if this thing goes any further, you'll be thanking your past self for creating that paper trail. It's like building your case file, huh? <sighs>
just in case you need to escalate things, you know, like to someone higher up at Chase or heaven forbid, explore some other options. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, some Reddit commenters mentioned contacting the Better Business Bureau. Yeah, the BBB. Or even, and I know this might sound kind of extreme, taking legal action. Yeah, I mean, those options are definitely out there, but let's be real for a second. Yeah. The Better Business Bureau, they might not have much sway with a company that's already ignoring their customers and, and honestly, potentially playing this like hide and seek game with multiple LLCs. You yeah, know? Oh, true. LLC. So it's like, each one's a separate legal entity, You're right? right? Exactly. So it's not like the BBB has like a squad of, you know, burly personal trainers that they can send out to track these phantom gyms down. Right. And as for legal action, well, that can be a whole other can of worms. <laughs> it can be. Time consuming, costly, especially for a recurring charge. You know, that's relatively small, even if it has been going on for a while. Yeah. And sometimes the most kind of empowering action is to focus on protecting yourself moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, like cutting off their ability to keep taking advantage. Okay, so focus on the future, not the past. Got it. You've been incredibly patient with all of this. You've been so persistent. But honestly, it just seems like this whole Gym Fit LLC thing, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I think so too. It really highlights this vulnerability and like the credit card system in general, the system that was designed for convenience, right. but is so easily, unfortunately, exploited. It's true though. Convenience often comes with a bit of a hidden price tag. Right. And in this case, that price tag is those unwanted charges, those frustrating battles to try to reclaim your financial peace of mind. Yeah. It's not right. Right. And it shouldn't be this hard. Mm. So we talked about disabling that updater service oh, and the power of like wielding that charge back like a sword. Like a sword. I like that. But are there other proactive steps that people can take to prevent this type of thing from happening in the first place? There are. And this is where I get to share one of my absolute favorite tools for online shopping and subscriptions. It's virtual card numbers. Ooh, yes. This came up a few times in that Reddit thread. Virtual card numbers. <gasps> okay. So to me, that sounds kind of like a little bit like something out of a spy movie. It kind of is, though. Okay, so virtual card numbers. Burner phones for finances. I'm intrigued. So how exactly does that protect me from like a gym fit repeat situation in the future? All right, so imagine this. Even if like a, a less than scrupulous company, they somehow get their hands on your virtual card number, right? Right. Once you cancel or if you see something fishy and you need to cancel that subscription, they just hit a dead end. Oh, I like that. The virtual card, it's either linked to a very limited amount of money or or it just expires after a certain time. Yeah. So you're minimizing your risk. It's all about like putting you back in control. It's like saying, here's access to this like tiny little corner of my financial world. Yeah. But uh, don't even think about asking for more. There you go. And it's not even just about like these kind of worst case scenarios. Virtual cards, they can be super helpful even for like Managing those free trials. Oh, yeah. You know, the ones that love to sneak in those auto renewals and the fine print. Ugh, don't even get me started on those. Like, reading the fine print, it's like the ultimate chore. It's like doing your taxes, watching paint dry, and like cleaning the bathroom all rolled into one. The worst. But this whole saga, it really drives home why it's so important. I mean, that Reddit thread, packed with cautionary tales, people getting hit with these surprise charges because they missed one tiny little claws, yeah. you know, hidden in like a wall of text. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to gloss over those terms and conditions. We've all done it. But this is where we as consumers need to really kind of step up our game a little. Take your time, read everything carefully. And if anything, literally anything seems even a little bit off or unclear, don't hesitate. Reach out to the company. Ask them to, you know, clarify. Yeah. Knowledge is power especially when it comes to this stuff. So true. Wow. Okay. You have given us a lot to think about today. Right. Like a lot. Disabling that updater service. Right. The power of like that chargeback sword. Of chargeback sword. Love it. Virtual card numbers being like extra, extra vigilant about reading that fine print. Yes. It really does feel good to have these tools, you know, in our back pocket. It's all about being proactive and informed, right? Like understanding your rights as a consumer, knowing how this whole credit card system works. It's it's all connected. Absolutely. And and let's not forget about the importance of persistence, right? Oh, yes. I mean, you have been so incredibly diligent about disputing these charges. And that's not easy. It's so easy to feel like overwhelmed or like to just give up when you're facing this faceless company. But you haven't backed down, and that's huge. And you know what? 
Your experience is a great reminder that we have way more power than we think, than we realize sometimes. By sharing your story, by coming on here, by asking questions and getting that advice, you're not only taking control of your own situation, you're helping countless other people that are probably facing this exact same thing and they don't even realize it. It's true. And that is what this deep dive is all about. We unpacked the specifics of your situation, this whole thing with Jim Fit LLC. We dug into that Reddit thread, that gold mine of advice. And I think really importantly, we pulled out those broader lessons, you know, about your rights as a consumer, about credit card smarts, and really about being proactive in this increasingly kind of complex digital world. 100%. And if you take away anything from this conversation, let it be this. Knowledge is power. And you are not alone. <laughs>